Hey guys, Tom Baker here from Chasing Cars. Well, it's pretty much the end of another year. 2020 has been a strange one, to say the least. Lots of good things, lots of not so good things, but uh, the support that we've had from our viewers, subscribers, commenters over the year has been so encouraging, and I really thank you for that. So, as one of our last pieces of content for 2020, I thought we'd just take a little bit of a walk through the Chasing Cars garage here in Sydney, and I'll introduce you to our two new long-termers as well, they were providing plenty of insights into uh, over the next few months. So let's head downstairs and check it out. Right, the inner sanctum. This is down in the bowels of the Chasing Cars office here in Sydney. And this is where we keep um, the cars that we're testing. So we go through a whole bunch of processes effectively uh, to generate what ends up being the video review that uh, you see on the channel or the written review that appears on the website. There's a bunch of static testing that involves uh, seeing how roomy a car is, seeing how intuitive the technology inside it is, what we can actually fit, and then other stuff like uh, testing or checking the tire pressures uh, as per the manufacturer standards before we actually get out on the road and test the car because we like everything to be equal brimmed fuel tanks, right fuel for the car, all of that sort of thing. So that all happens before we go out and uh, make those subjective assessments on how a car drives. So there's plenty that needs to be done right here before we ever turn a wheel out on the road and work out what these things are like to drive. But anyway, we've got a few decent uh, rigs here in the garage this week. Um, the first one behind me is actually my new long-termer. So if you watched my review of the Genesis GV80, you probably would have heard me drop that one would be coming in. The car I filmed with that day was like a really uh, Miami Vice spec matte white car. The one that I've actually gone for is a little bit more conservative. Um, we've got the Himalayan gray over the June beige kind of tan interior with black ash wood. That's definitely a bit of me. And the car that I've opted for is the three liter straight six diesel with the luxury package. Why have I gone for the GV80 when it's probably going to be a very low volume car, at least for its first couple of years. Well, I think Hyundai are taking a really good stab at competing in the luxury space with cars like the X5, Audi Q7, Mercedes GLE. I think Infiniti really struggled in Australia because uh, Australians are pretty picky uh, with their luxury cars and just dressing up a Nissan with not much uh, even tinsel around it, I think we sort of saw through that. Whereas this is not a Hyundai, this is a bespoke platform, bespoke engine, bespoke interior, and I think they've got a shot, or at least I'm interested in working that out over the next several months. The next car along is the new Ford Escape, kind of another interesting SUV. Uh, in the past, it, it hasn't sold well in Australia, or at least in the previous generation, which was initially called Cougar, uh, which is a bit unfortunate in this country, and then it was renamed to Escape. Uh, car journalists loved it, handled like a hot hatch in an SUV body, uh, but people didn't buy it. So Ford are hoping that that changes with this new shape that is a bit softer, uh, looks like a, the Focus, but has 183 kilowatts of power as standard. So that's kind of interesting. This is a very important car for Volkswagen, the new T-Roc 110 TSI style. So it's a base model T-Roc for Australia, effectively a Golf SUV, 1.4 liter engine. We don't get the 1.5 out of Europe, but we do get an eight speed torque converter auto. For Volkswagen, that's kind of like the B team gearbox though. The DSG is what they put their money into. So very interested to see uh, what this drives like. Uh, this is one thing that we're keeping over Christmas for a slightly longer test. Here's a Honda Civic RS no major reason for having it in the garage at the moment. It's very much coming towards the end of the Civic's uh, life. There'll be a new one before the middle of 2021 here in Australia, but this is just a little refresher test. Next up, uh, this is our second new long-termer. Uh, it's gonna be run by our staff rider here, Tom Place. And the reason we have this Yaris Cross is effectively because this is Toyota's play at bringing hybrid tech to the small, really small SUV segment. If you've been a subscriber for a while, you'll remember that last year I ran a RAV4 hybrid and learned a lot about it over a longer term ownership with that car. Uh, and uh, I think the insights that we took from it have actually uh, been pretty popular on YouTube. And so keen to do the same for the Yaris Cross because Toyota are making quite a difference here 
in terms of getting people into hybrids that don't really require you to change your driving style and yet they, they do tend to use a lot less uh, petrol fuel. So we'll see if that's the case over a long term period with the Yaris Cross. In our initial review of it, found that it had a really good ride and handling and it was pretty economical. Uh, and so yeah, I'd be very interested to see what happens. I think that car will probably get quite a lot of interest and questions. And that's my Volvo. Yep, because you can't really be a car journalist without owning an obscure station wagon. Heading over to our other little bay in the garage here. So Honda CRV, second Honda uh, in the garage at the moment. This is the new facelifted version. So by the time you see this, there'll probably be a review of this car up on the channel. This is quite a fancy one. Leather, sunroof, a nice one by the looks of it. And this is a little bit of a festive treat. Uh, red Christmas colors, Toyota GR Yaris, uh, probably the most important hot hatch to launch in, in 2020. Uh, and there's been, I mean, that's tough competition in Australia given the Fiesta ST also launched in 2020, but this thing is quite a serious machine uh, and quite seriously expensive now because it was affordable in the first round when Toyota had it priced at 40 grand and then they kicked it up to 45 and it's now 50,000 plus on-road costs for this 1.6 litre turbo three, but proper four wheel drive system, proper performance. So keen to have another drive in that over the coming days. So that's a look at uh, how we test the cars here in Sydney and a look at what we've got running around the office at the moment. In particular, our new long-termers, the Toyota Yaris Cross and the Genesis GV80. So very keen to uh, thoroughly test those cars even more thoroughly than normally and provide some interesting insights over the next few months. So thanks again for all your support in 2020. Obviously a really big year for chasing cars coming into the Budget Direct family. I really appreciate your support on that. I think that it's a natural partnership. And of course this year, you know, we've had the pandemic. It's been a tough year for a lot of people. Uh, and I hope that the, the Chasing Cars content we have been able to make and share has provided a bit of light entertainment and information. And I really appreciate your support, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing to our content. It really does make a difference. And I hope you have a Merry Christmas or a Happy Holidays. Looking forward to seeing you again in 2021. Let me know what you're gonna be up to over the season. Make sure to hit subscribe if you haven't already. And yeah, we'll catch you again soon.